so this is Scott Weller, and he was sailing with Ezra yesterday, and they were super fast downwind in the last two races. And I just wanted him to talk about why. A uh, big thing for us was getting the kite squared all the way back, um, getting the board up, and really waves we could get on, we, we really tried to, to drive down. Um, Ezra would come up two or three degrees, and I, I'd yell at him to go right back down. We just, we really felt fast by the lead. So how did you get on the waves? Um, it was enough of a, enough of a wave sometimes with the motorboat wake where you could just kind of cruise down it. Um, a lot of it was really short and choppy, so it was really challenging. But I think with the board all the way up, um, and we tried to get our weight as far forward as possible to really get the, the back end of the boat up. Um, and just kind of drive the bow, drive the bow down, and keep the kite rotated around. So, was your rig? What were you doing with your backstay and stuff? Uh, backstay was completely off. So you didn't uh, try to stabilize it? No, we just we let the rig go. It's at some points it actually that was a bit of an issue because the rig would bounce and it would collapse the kite. But um, we really just tried to get that rig as far forward as possible. So were you in the middle or front? I was in the middle trimming. In the middle. Okay, so here we had talking to Lenny. He played the shifts and jived downwind. You guys hardly ever jived and just. Yeah, we just we went by the lee on the rum line and looking uh, looking at our tracks. Did you pump um, the spinnaker on the waves? Some or? a little bit. Uh, some spots was really too light to really aggressively pump. Um, you just had to pick your spots. Kate did a really good job calling breeze when it was coming down. And trying to stay in those those narrow bands of breeze uh, that really made a big difference too um, it felt like we we really tried to stay in the puff as long as possible and if we had to come up a little bit to get into it and then drive back down we, we would but you know just by the lee it seemed really fast yesterday yeah so scott and as they were ezra i mentioned earlier and they were the boat that would hit the right in the last two races going out right out we thought in the Ashley River current, all the other Charleston boats went left. Why do you think it paid off? I think it was getting out of that Cooper swing right around Fort Pinckney, uh, getting out to that right side. It just it felt like it felt better. So the Cooper was actually coming in I think, I think by the, the Cooper, battery and beyond. Yeah, right? I, I think the Cooper was really. I mean, we saw it when everybody from the left tacked back. You know, we we just we leveraged out significantly, and everybody was way down to us. Yeah. Um, so the wind was kind of coming out of what the east, east southeast, and the current was coming in for those last two races. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was, uh, was confusing for a lot. It was, of it was challenging conditions. Um, you know, you could, there were shifts out there on the course, but they they didn't last that long. Um, yeah, the, getting up to the top mark, uh, we had to spin a 360. We we tapped the top mark once the, yeah. the current kind of slammed. And us they in stayed there. in front of us. When yeah, I don't know how too. we did that either. That, that was that was a quick well, 360. Well, we were we were going up against the current still. Yeah, that might have done it. So, was your rig tissue set up for light air? Or? Uh, rig was set up at base. Yeah. Um, and we're sailing fishers. Uh, okay. We actually we kind of we really worked on playing the wire and the backstay a fair amount yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I kept the the, the wire fine tuned. Just. You know, the nice puff came in, we'd ease it on, and same thing with the backstay. As soon as the puff was gone, we, we loosened it right back up because getting through that chop upwind was really important. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, Scott. Absolutely.